Here at Camp Kennan, we're always learning. That's kind of the whole point of this channel. And in the very near future, we'll be visiting Costa Rica for some really amazing content for all you campers. So we thought it would be a good idea to familiarize ourselves with some of the venomous creatures we might come across. And where better to do that than at a place I consider to be the library of venomous snakes here at the Reptile Discovery Center. But even better, we get to pick the brain of the chief librarian, Carl Barton. All right. You going? All right, so I'm really excited here at the Reptile Discovery Center, not only to see venom extractions, I also wanted to meet some of Costa Rica's most feared venomous snakes. We got a fertile ant on here. So when we come back, we're gonna learn about this animal and another species from Costa Rica. Cool? A good portion of my life has been all about action, which still holds true. But now I pour all that time and energy into wildlife conservation, education, and the pursuit of knowledge. This is Camp Kenner. So this is a young male Bothrops Asper. All right. And um, in, in Costa Rica, they refer to them both as the Fertile Lance and or the Tertia Pale. Okay, yeah, the Fertile Lance, I gotta be honest, I'm gonna goof around a little bit here, but Fertile Lance always sounded like a really good 80s hair metal band. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are Fertile Lance. Like if I had a, a heavy metal band, I'd name it Fertile Lance. It's just really cool, but that, that means Lance head, right? So, so when you guys look at the triangular shape and look where, just at the, the difference between its body or its neck and its head, you get that very significant. Look. Yeah, and um, these get big. Males don't typically get too big. Females will get probably just shy of seven feet. Um, it's an enormous snake. It's a terribly destructive venom in terms of tissue. And it's, it's um, a hematoxin. It's a hematoxin primarily. There are several things in, in asper venom that are kind of active and dangerous, and um, lots of times in uh, snake bites with with asper, you see amputations or destruction of uh, the limb or destruction of the hand or this kind of thing. Um, unfortunately, it's a really high strung nervous species, so they do bite people. Um, we had a close friend who is, uh, well actually she's German, but she lives here in Florida, and she was crossing a road one night after a party just outside of San Jose and got bitten by a fertile ants, not, not too much smaller than this one, and um, 28 piles of antivenom there in Costa Rica, and it took the foot, oh, close to 18 months to granulate back in. The, tissue had gone down all the way to where all of her tendons were exposed and um, this was despite treatment and uh, took the, the, the limb almost 18 months to really begin to look. Um, um, I, I was told, you know, going to Costa Rica I was hoping to kind of get hands on with one of these animals, mm -hmm. um, but I was also told to be extremely careful because working with the fertile ants, as you mentioned, they, they're a twitchy, nervous mm -hmm. snake, right? Um, Very dangerous snake to work with. I, I, what do you remember the first time you worked with one? Yeah, you know, the first time we started with Bothrops and, and somebody had said to us, oh, we always think of Bothrops as mambas with long fangs. And so we were kind of prepared for that. Um, we do a double grab on these snakes. We use a gentle um, kind of restraint on the body as we begin to catch the head so the snake can't thrash or twist or this kind of thing and injure itself. And it's a reasonable way to work with the animals. They're fairly good venom producers. Um, a lot of the Bothrops venoms are in demand because they... Um, have some interesting things in terms of coagulation properties and so our anti-coagulation properties and so it makes those venoms kind of of interest and and we just like that whole genera. We think they're cool snakes, they get big, they're nervous, they're high strung, they're fast, they're toxic so they really are kind of the epitome of a venomous snake but uh, you know Asper is still a very common snake in Costa Rica yeah. and they uh, it's still a snake you encounter with some frequency and so it's something we always tell people we're going to spend time in the jungle out there. It's something you really do need to pay attention to. Right. Far more so than like the chance of seeing a, a Bushmaster or something of this nature. Do you guys keep Bushmaster here? Uh, we don't. We okay. have no Bushmaster currently, okay. but... Crazy. So we'll put him back. You got I'm it. I'm going to bring up uh, next an eyelash viper. Another Sounds good. Another kind of famous Costa Rican species. All right, hold on one is second. Is that female? No. This is, hey, a, young, ooh, this is a young female. male. Coming back, you have that big, beautiful uh, eyelash back here, right? The I love this place. Yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. it's actually like going to a a library of serpents, uh, but instead of books, you're actually he's able to pull out the species, which is so incredible. And again, guys, you know I'm heading to Costa Rica. 
I've never been hands-on with any of their snakes. So it's important for me to be able to identify uh, venomous snakes in Costa Rica. Um, so that's why I'm here. It's awesome. And this place is only a few hours drive from my house, so I'm pumped. No way, gorgeous. All right, so yeah. um, of course this is uh, an eyelash viper. This is a uh, young female. This is Bothriopsis shilagali. Okay. No, pardon me, Bothriacus shilagali. I got it wrong, they changed that. It used to uh -huh. just be a Bothrops. And eyelash vipers, of course, are uh, almost entirely arboreal. Cool. Right? They spend yeah. all their time in the trees and bushes. and. Uh, it's a fairly common snake in Costa Rica, but you don't see them frequently. You're more cryptic. Exactly. So, you know, you can kind of imagine this guy in a clutch of bananas or a, um, something where she or an orchid of some sort where she would simply disappear. <coughs> Excuse me. And she's kind of looking <coughs> Excuse Listen. me, for something to hold on to. Yeah, that's what they and, do. Um, right. So we'll give her a little hook here to come here, baby. No, I'm sorry. Oh, just something, something to feel something secure on and wrap a around. More right. Yeah. And um, of course, they get their name from those beautiful extended scales above the eye. And schlags, as they're kind of called in the, the, the venomous hobby, are uh, variable. They come in green and pink and brown and yellow and golden. And, but they are spectacularly beautiful, as you can see. Um, we do produce a little eyelash viper venom. From time to time, we'll handle. We have about, oh, a half dozen in the group now, something like that. And they're actually okay venom producers. They have big long fangs because they uh, sometimes feed on birds, right? Right, so they got to be able to grab them right. in that habitat. So, um, so it's just a cool snake all around. This is a very popular snake in the hobby, and um, we are big fans. I, as I said, we only have about a half dozen now. I wish I had 20 of them, but uh, they are a spectacular species. And they are a pit viper. Yes, you can see that yeah. big, beautiful pit behind the nostril. Wow, it makes sense when they're hunting right. warm-blooded yep. prey like a bird. And particularly oftentimes these guys are nocturnal. And so uh, that added kind of infrared um, addition to their hunting skills is a real plus, right? Yeah. So, but but are ambush predators as well, very right? Much. So they're very just going to hang out, yep. maybe find an area where there's high traffic in bird or whatever they're yeah. kind of looking for that night. You know, on young they start out as some frogs and little lizards, and so right, and then with the hopes of scoring a meal um, that evening. And these guys, this is a snake we often exhibit, and they're still really popular just because people are blown away by that color. It is really a beautiful animal. It's amazing how nature made some of the more uh, toxic or dangerous animals so beautiful. Spectacular. Yeah, yeah we almost, love that. It's entrancing. Really do. I'm with you, Kevin. Yeah. Now, let's just quickly uh, talk about their venom. What type of venom are they producing? Uh, so these how toxic guys, are they? Yeah. Um, you know, the toxicity is probably down the scale probably more in line with some of our smaller rattlesnakes that are not particularly toxic. You know, some rattlesnakes are terribly toxic, Mojave's like and midget fades, and this is probably in line with that. Okay. There is no specific antivenom for eyelash viper bites. Um, I have never been bitten by one, thankfully, but a close friend has, and they did not treat the bite. They simply let wow. it, you know, uh, run its course. It's a lot of swelling. There's some discoloration and pain. I imagine, and I don't know this for sure, you'd have to talk to somebody that's really looked at this venom, but there are probably some anticoagulant properties or some kind of blood chemistry properties. That's often the case in some of these little guys, um, but I don't know specifically. But unlike uh, some of the smaller vipers, these guys are not terrifically toxic. This would n normally not be considered a lethal snake. Okay, all right. And then um, to wrap it up, so yeah. we don't have a Bushmaster here, but a Bushmaster is still a Costa Rican snake and still a Costa Rican pretty snake, good huh? bite, wouldn't you yeah. say? Yeah, you know, Bushmasters, again, you get into this volume thing versus toxicity. So Bushmaster venom, on the whole, is not terribly toxic, but it is delivered in enormous quantities in some instances. Okay. Now, when we think about that, we usually think of big 10-footers, that kind of thing. Those snakes are not common. Um, Stenophrase is the subspecies of Bushmaster, or now it might be a full species in Costa Rica, on the eastern side. Um, Alanocephalus is on the west side of the, of the country. But... Um, those guys don't account for many snake bites cool. down there. Carl, man, I can't thank you enough, man. Okay, uh, I love it. This has so been glad. great. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm so glad to be here. And again, it's just like having access to, you know, whenever you go into a new area, you should know the animals that inhabit it. Um, I love reptiles, as I'm sure everyone here uh, does. But it's always good to educate yourself with someone who knows more than you. Carl, there's a lot more than I do. Thanks, guys.